prospects and customers. There's already people that are going to be at your door from day one because that's all that's the biggest challenge when someone's building a, a destination distillery. Um, you know, it's so this area is uh, this area is crazy. Um, within a 15 mile radius, I found two spaces that would actually work for my my needs. Uh, I need a minimum of an 18 foot ceiling, um, and there just isn't that around here. Um, so the two spaces I found, one was a fair distance away, and it had a brewery next to it. Uh, that's kind of a nice place. Um, then this place here, the landlords actually fought to get me in. Um, they said, this is this is the kind of client, this is the kind of customer, this is the kind of business we want in the space. So I was absolutely blessed and lucky to get that, um, to be in a place where I'm just surrounded by wineries. <laughs> I mean, there's people here are coming to party and have a good time. So you're, you're correct. Uh, it, it is a challenge to find that kind of space. And the fact that I actually landed it, um, let's say there's, there was a big happy dance happening that day. <laughs> Good for you. All right. Um, Ken, uh, actually, yeah, Ken, what's new at Breckenridge these days? Uh, you know, a couple of things. We've been uh, fighting some some battles just like everybody else. One of the things we, we actually won, Colorado was trying to um triple our excise our state excise tax um we fought and fought and fought um they were trying to double the breweries excise tax as well so um i don't know why there was a couple senators that wanted to for some unknown reason they were trying to push this through i mean colorado's a huge brewery uh state and, and fairly large distilling too uh so that got shot down so that was a a big success on our end um, one of the things we're seeing in, in California, it's not a huge state for us, but a, a good opportunity. Um, they're, they're struggling at all of the, the stores there, essentially all the, the grocery stores, all the alcohol is now locked up there. Um, it, it, you can't just pull it off the shelf, uh, because, because everybody was stealing things and the, and the state said, we're not going to do anything about theft anymore. So um, California has seen a huge downturn in uh, spirit sales from those certain locations, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of the bigger grocers. Um, and, and I don't know what the answer is because um, <laughs> uh, it's the grocers are, are doing that, right? So what are they doing on, on premise? What is the on premise? Thing? Like what are they doing on premise sales going in California? So, so restaurants, hotels. What restaurants, is it? What is that? restaurants and hotels. I mean, California is is down right now because their population and their GDP has gone down. But the on premise okay. is fine. It's the it's all the grocers. They they essentially have locked yeah. up all the alcohol. Yeah, you, you yeah. You can't just go pick it up off a shelf like you used to be able to. Yeah. You can go pick well, up. DC is the same. DC is the same. We we're feeling a lot of theft within right. our community as well so. And, and so that's a struggle i think you're you know california is probably the worst but um mm. it's, it's becoming yeah. a problem other places where you just you know the, there's no penalty for stealing anymore so so right. the, the stores right. are trying to figure out a way to, to stop the loss um yeah. and what it does is it stops sales it's a lot easier you you buy more when it's easily access, accessible right so yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. and I'm so I'm, I'm surprised that has no not that I think it's a great solution, but in Pennsylvania the way they do it, where you've got the alcohol literally walled off, where you have to go through a gate, mm -hmm. uh, and that there's a there's a you know a, right. a specific cashier for that yeah. product, that yeah. that makes it a little bit more accessible. It's, you know. Yeah. So I you know this is a new thing. I'm sure they'll get it figured out, but it's it's really hurting um it's hurting them right now yeah yeah one other thing I'll, I'll share my screen here kind of a cool little project we uh undertook here um this is a new we do a collaboration every year with a different artist um oh, this, sweet. this is one we did oh, this year so great label um, nice. abby, abby this Beautiful. is the artist right here abby she's um She's got alopecia, so she lost all her hair, and she uses now her um, kind of her bald head as a, a canvas to to do art with. So we partnered with her. Dope. This is uh, this is kind of what she did, and then this is our fourth iteration of this uh, concept. Where every year we have a 
a new artist come in and create a bottle. Then they also do a graffiti wall somewhere near um, where we're at, either in Breckenridge or in Denver, Colorado. So uh, and then we, we give 5% uh, back to uh, a charity that, that they're choosing. So um, just kind of a cool project uh, this year, I think uh, really neat um, project for us. So um, that's, that's some that we're, our releases today, actually good timing on that. Is that can I get it online, Ken? Uh, you can, this is just in, uh, just on, on prem, uh, in our location. Yeah. <laughs> okay. it, uh, that's what I was going to ask. It's a limited, so it's a, a sauntered <laughs> finish. We only have a thousand bottles of it. So, um, they're, this, you can do a transfer and bond. You can do a TIB. We to can another do a TIB. Yes, we right? Did, yeah. Um, <laughs> No, so yeah, and, and what we found with this, it's kind of like you were talking, uh, Vanessa, on your Juneteenth. I, I'm not as familiar with with uh, what your product was, but we started doing this, and now we've got this annually. People will line up at the door, and they want it. You know, we we don't pre-purchase it. We say you guys come here. Um, we'll we'll throw a big party, uh, and it, okay. it just creates, well, it creates buzz. Nice. So. It's, it's a, it's kind of a neat little project that we've got going on. Um, and this year I'm, I'm kind of, I'm excited because the, a lot of the other ones we've done have, have been really great art, um, great artists, and it's gone to art, but this one's kind of a bigger, um, you know, foundation oh, like good. that. So I think we'll, we'll it, the buzz is it's, it's going to be a big success. So we're pretty excited about that right now. Yeah. Congratulations. It's going to yeah. get bigger and bigger because that's how my Juneteenth, you know, now I'm working on it. It comes out every single year, and wow. I only do one batch. That's it. You know, people right. want me to oh remake the batch. I don't remake the batch, so I'll be making. Yeah. I'm starting next year where it's going to be bigger. So yeah, ours is a so different ready. wine finish of bourbon every year. So this year it's a wow. sauce. Last year That's it was nice. a uh, a cognac finish. Um, yeah, it's a different finish. Nice. Yep. Um, yeah, the, you know, the only other thing and I thought I'd like to get your guys' input, we're just seeing a lot of, um, you know, breweries started a couple years ago, kind of going out of business. Now we're starting to see some of the small distillers um, go out of business. I'm seeing, uh, if you guys are seeing that same thing and um, it's it's tough. I, I don't know, um, you know, what just kind of wanted to get your guys' feedback on, on what you're seeing there. Isn't Steve well, in Colorado? What? Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's closing his, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think the issue is that, yes, it's been happening and it's going to continue to happen. Right. Because most of the small craft distillers, they interpreted craft as being, we're just going to sell locally here. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. you know, they, re they learned the lesson that the local distributor is not going to do much for you unless you're doing it yourself. Yeah. Uh, and then they then the second round was well let's f the distribu distributor let's just build a destination where we can sell bottles you know at full margin um and that can work for places like what trent is going to be doing you know where it's all you're you're not trent you're not going to be putting things in bottles to sell in liquor stores or are you well, well, I will be. You're absolutely. just selling it. Man. You should. No, I'm, 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 yeah, but I'm you're good. you're not you're yeah. you're two years <laughs> out from doing that. Yeah, and yeah. that's how we started, yeah. Michael. Right, we're in. We have four hundred thousand yeah. people come through our distillery every year because we're at oh, the wow. most, we're at the most wow. biggest ski resort in the world. Um, so that's yeah. how we started, and the brand grew. People kind of brought it back, and and then we got into and and you you and you did and you the restaurant is is like five star. <laughs> Yeah, and so that was um, something. And the product is in enough other markets, you know, where it's recognizable. So you guys, yeah. what I was going to get to is that not everyone has been able to connect all the dots. So you it's have hard. a thriving, a thriving destination business that not only has the tastings and the bottle sales, but has a full restaurant that's packed that's hard to get into. Um, you know that wow. that I think I had some of the best steak I've ever had there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Wow. And, and one thing, you know, I'll say, and, and maybe this is something other people like our restaurant doesn't make a dime, right? The, it is truly a marketing tool to get yeah. people to come here. It's a fabulous place and it's expensive, but it's an expensive place to do business. And 
fine dining is hard to make money on, but it it's, a, it's an experience that people, you know, they come here and they have a great meal. Hopefully they leave with a bottle where we can get full margin. Right. Um, and, and then they, when they're at the, maybe a liquor store, they see it and they go, Oh, I remember that awesome meal I had there. Right. And, and, and that's kind of, what we use it as is really a marketing. So, so Ken, your so big Ken, advantage many... is your tourism. That's that's huge. I sorry, I supply probably yeah. 30, 40, 50 craft distillers all over. We've we've actually spoken to you guys about supply side, but and all of these guys, they they want to go to the next level, but they haven't even achieved. You know, you you have to sell. Uh, call it a hundred thousand bottles a year in order to break yeah. even and start putting some yep. money in your pocket. And if you don't get to that, you can't even get to the next yeah. level. And that's what all these guys are struggling with. Right. Yeah. That's what I, I get a call once a week from somebody like, Hey, how do we get into Southern or R and DC or, or I'm like, <laughs> you guys don't even no, no. Yeah. Don't try with that because because you're just, <laughs> let me, let me just say this. Let me just say this working with the company. I mean, it's, it was, it's, you know, even through the pandemic, it was very tough. And, you know, again, you know, I support minority owned, black owned spirit. They didn't give us any attention. And no. that's just what it is. No. And so, Ken, my question to you is that, you know, do you have any minority owned brands, black owned brands in your, in your, um, I mean, I mean, you know, in your portfolio at all? Uh, not we, yet. I'm gonna send him some bottles. He can do a TIB. No, we're, we're actively, we're actively looking. Um, you know, the the issue has always been, like the last couple of years, is if you're looking to buy somebody, the the valuations are insane, right? Mm -hmm. Um, they, because everybody was great. Are you having Are you having trouble getting it? Like, what is? I mean. Because at the end of the day, good juice is good juice, right? So it's not about even the color, anything. It's about the juice, right? So yeah. if it's good and it sells, you know, it, we don't want to get – I I, I want to say I do represent us, but at the end of the day, I represent good juice. So I want to represent good juice. So whatever good juice is, that's what I represent. Right, it could be. Ken, I don't think yeah. Ken can carry because Ken is a yeah. distillery, so we're yeah. different. Okay. So we're not, yeah, we're not on and off premise. They're, we're they're, a distillery. Yeah, they have one, right. they have one right. brand, Breckenridge. Right, okay. which is there. Yeah. Well, maybe this is just for the group. For the group, but, I'm sorry. But we yeah, look at, we, you know, we've we've done fairly well. We look at buying others, so we've looked at buying tequila brands and. And all that, yeah. you know, other other distilleries and things. And um, definitely, I think the minority is is a good uh, a good opportunity, good business choice, right? So, let me ask you a question, um, Ken. Don't worry, Amy and I are coming up there. You know, I'm in New York, right? So I'm coming yeah. to see you. <laughs> <laughs> but could you? I I think we can do that here. Like here, okay, for me. I don't have a tasting room. I've always, when I started, I'm a full production facility. So, which is very different from how everybody else started. You know, when I started long ago, it was the distillery and and hitting the streets and the pavement with my pimp, the government, to get into Southern. You know, Southern, I had Southern at one time, and then, you know, I'm with RNDC and other states. So, for New York here, which is great, New York, D.C., and Maryland, I get to sell direct to, you know, on an off-premise with the out-of-state distiller's permit. So now I'm opening a second place so I can have a tasting room and a destination location. But I'm seeing a lot of the other distilleries, like the ones in the Finger Lakes, they're going out of business. So I'm buying some of their equipment because even though they had the destination, they didn't diversify. See, for me, I was forced to sell and hit the streets and do it the traditional way, that way, and and have customers 
Right. Do you, you know, and now we have DTC. We were doing DTC anyway through the retailers because it was out of a necessity. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the um the ones who were going out of business, they didn't carve out different compartments within their distillery to bring in additional money, you know, because it was necessary, you know, at that day. You know, do you see Breckenridge having all of those compartments? Is that what's made you guys successful? I mean, because yeah. I do 10,000 nine liter cases a year just here. So imagine when I open up my tasting room, which I don't have. I'm hoping it doesn't take away from that. <laughs> yeah. So so I'd say what one of the things we did, we hit the street. In Colorado, you can only distribute. We can self-distribute in Colorado. We did that for a while and, and grew. And then once you get, once we got a distributor, they kind of said, you're not doing that anymore. If you want us to, to help you, we want that money. Um, so, so we don't self-distribute anymore. Um, but yeah, we hit the streets hard and, um, and, and we kind of grew, you know, guerrilla marketing and we grew big, like small chunks locally. We didn't try to expand nationally in the first year. If you like, to me, that's the, the worst thing you can do probably because it's, it's going to cost you so much money and, and, um, sales no people, marketing, all that, yeah. um, right. grow that brand local. And then, you know, once you kind of build that base to me, I'd say work with the small distributors in each state. Don't try to go to one of the big three because you're not going to get their attention, right? Yeah. I, I'm fairly large and I can't get their attention. Um, you know, I'm one of their biggest brands at, at, at these guys and and I can't get their attention. Um, so, you know, I think you you work with a different distributor in every in state, state, in every state probably. And if you crush that, then maybe, you, you know, you move to one of the big, three or four distributors, but to me, the, the smaller guys are going to be the ones that help you out. Um, they're yeah. hungry. They're hungry, right? They don't have the Brown Foremans and the Jim Bean. They, they don't have these guys, you know, the no. Sazerac, that sort of a thing. Um, so they're going to be hungry. They're going to work for you as a brand. Uh, yeah, they don't have the same reach as one of the big guys, but um, those big guys aren't going to pay attention to a small brand. Is, no. is the, it's not. It's a struggle. It, it's it's difficult, but that's uh, to me. I think that's how you gotta. If you want to grow your brand, get with somebody that's that's small and hungry, just like you are as a yeah. as a small distillery, right? Yeah. Well, there's uh, several of them that are going out of business here, and that was also the reason why the DTC got passed. The direct to consumer got passed. Right. Because we have a lot of distilleries that went out of business upstate. And it's not even expensive upstate as it is down here in, you know, New York, in, you know, Long Island, you know, New York, Bronx. It's not even. So there, they really suffered. And I'm talking about they spent some money. I went to, to Brooklyn. A distillery went out of business before they even really started in Brooklyn. I bought their tanks. An auction, you know? So, I mean, I got it at a great price, but it was just disheartening to see that, you know, they got investors' money of how many um, millions of dollars, I would say, and they did a whole build out. And here it is, I'm, you know, picking up, you know, 2,000 liter tanks, additional ones, you know, you name it. So it's tough. Yeah, yeah it's tough because interest rates high and, investors are not as open with their checkbooks right, right now, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, you gotta be smart with your, your money right now. And I'm also starting to see uh, the consumers are, are spending less too. They're going, so I have a, yeah, I have a value brand. I have value brands and I mean, I'm getting calls left and right for my one seven fives, you know? So Mike, you know, I'm the one seven five lady. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Uh, I, yes. I think that I think that the the whole trading down uh, has been a big uh, shift for the past six months, or maybe actually more. The past year uh, really started later in late, you know, started yeah. in twenty three uh, with all the inflation issues, and people were just, uh, I'll buy the you know the lower tier 
uh, where the opposite happened coming out of COVID, which was people were buying the more premium because they were bored. They felt like they had some money. Yeah. After they hadn't gone out to dinner for like two years. Um, there she is. I'm so sorry, guys. Here. I hit traffic on the way home. I'm, I figured better late than never. I could at least pop on and say. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hi. Well, hey, hi. Vanessa. Hey, hon. How you doing? I'm good. That's good. You, I, we got to talk. Uh -oh. I got to come see you. When okay. I come see you, I got to see Michael, too, because I can't yes, step in Georgia absolutely. and then not just see you <laughs> only. and not. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so, Carrie, let's see. You missed a whole conversation earlier about um, no alcohol wine in New York uh, state laws. <laughs> um, and also, well, you'll have to watch the tape because we had a very interesting uh, participant who has invented <laughs> um, an alternative to are you, talking, are you talking about me? Are you talking about no, me, Mike? No, no, no not you. Oh, no, okay. I, the, you're, you're be next. First, I was like, I'm going to talk about Marcel because I thought that okay. was probably the most fascinating um, person we've had. In, in a, he's back. Yes, uh, Marcel. Harry would love you. <laughs> Well, I know. Where are you now? Uh, I, I love the things, you know, and if they taste. And uh, you just see my uh, the little warehouse here. It's uh, this is all vodka. It's I don't know, thousand liters, uh, ethanol. Uh, so clean. So it, I don't know, thirty three thousand bottles. <laughs> you know, it's, oh, wow. Where are you? I'm in central Switzerland. For you, Central Switzerland is maybe Central New York. It's not big, you know, Switzerland. Two and a half hours each direction, I have borders. So, uh, <clears throat> so for my terrace, I see all the Alps. So, um, uh, twelve thousand feet mountains surrounding my apartment. Oh wow! Wow, That's beautiful. Maybe we should do a field trip there instead of here. Yeah, I think so. Right. <laughs> well, I think I think Marcel, Marcel has been so convincing. That he's going to have to package up some samples and send yeah, them our way. What's special what I about thinking. your vodka? I know you don't. Everybody doesn't have to repeat everything that I missed. But what's special about your vodka that you're so convincing? What's with what, what's, what's? He ain't making here? vodka. Look, <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell her, Marcel. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't know how to call it at the moment. A liquid I call Icosent that you can add. To any hydrolat you do, so you can make alcohol free, distill something with water, with water, oh. and um, you just add alcohol called a liquid from me. It's very vegan, hundred percent vegan. It has zero oh. percent, and in my alcohol uh, yeah, if it you has have zero what? Sorry, you broke you. Alcohol, uh, alcohol. Oh, zero so alcohol. it's no alcohol. But he says that it not only is it the uh, the mouthfeel and the sensory part of it that it actually people feel like they're a little buzz. Yeah. It feels no, no, it, it's even better. Sorry, it's hard if you didn't taste it, but it's better than drinking alcohol. Why? And from feeling, you have more feeling. You can drink five gin tonics, you are happy, you're drinking it. You have the same feeling with alcohol, but you don't get the bad, you know, like you have drunk too much and you're rock, walking around, oh, I'm fully drunk. Uh, you know, <laughs> same. Uh, uh, All right. Well, you gonna send some samples? We want yeah. samples. This is an <laughs> aperol, like aperol spritz. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, need uh, seventy percent less sugar than aperol, seventy percent less, and I added strawberry. It's a uh, bitter orange and strawberry aperol. It at the moment it's the no. most. Uh, and then I have, but I'm not want to sell only my brands, you know, I just create things that people can taste. And this one has one-to-one -one rewriting the res recipe. So the same recipe I have with alcohol, it's in this bottle. Just to go to here. Here is the, the bottle, Aperol bottle with alcohol, with 15% alcohol. And this is the same recipe used with my technology with my data and everything, how to rewrite your recipe for alcohol free, made alcohol free. So I didn't develop it. I just rewrote okay. the recipe. So I have an orange gin, alcohol free. It's with orange and raspberry gin. 
it's the second most sold bottle I have at the moment. Even one, like I told you, one bar, a small bar, you know? Were like, you a store? I don't, I'm sorry, because I, I know I'm late. I apologize for asking all these questions. Are you a distributor or are you a store? Or? He's he's an inventor. He's an inventor of the, oh, of the, okay. of the And he's a here. rocket scientist. Oh. That's right. <laughs> so, so it is rocket science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything I learned for rocket science, you know, how to do research, <laughs> how to document my research. This helped me to get there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, do uh, research, how to start um, processes. And my thing was to replace alcohol and how to replace alcohol, not make alcohol free, because alcohol free will never taste. I can't get it. I, I, I look to any label and I can tell you any time if it's with tasty or not, just by the label of the content. Uh, and the nutrition table. I could tell you if it tastes or not. I don't have to taste. <laughs> so it's really... <laughs> so that's alcohol-free, just on low alcohol. That particular bottle, that gin you have, that orange gin. It's uh, less than 0.5% alcohol. Okay. Um, eight with aroma. But uh, this one, um, you can't read it because it's Switzerland, Swiss, German. It's called Switzerland in glass. So there's. I figured Netflix. that. <laughs> it says Schweizer in glass. Switzerland in glass. It's missing one S. <laughs> in a hurt into the glass. And yes. it has to change through the national anthem. So the national anthem is oh. come in morning dawn. So this is the morning dawn. And you, if you add tonic, where well, I have a picture, I have a picture here. That if looks like add, hibiscus to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. And I okay. doesn't exist before. This is a berry, and if I spray dry this berry, this berry gets a, a, a sensitive. So in base, it's black. In neutral chin, it's uh, like morning dawn, Bordeaux brown. And if you are tonic or sour, like prosecco, it changed to the red of the Swiss flag. So I made oh. a glass. You see the Swiss glass? It's uh, mm. also you feel chin to the to the Swiss cross bottom. You have oh, wow. and then you feel the tonic in the same distance above, and you have a chin tonic. Mm. Nice. Yeah. I'm an engineer. I also uh, patented the Swiss national the cross. Nobody protected the cross as a mold, so I got a patent. For ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that this was not patented by no one? I can't and believe that. that. They might oh. mistake you for a lifeguard. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, that's it. what I would have took it as. <laughs> uh, and, and do you make red ice? Oh, uh, safety. A lot of safety. Safety. <laughs> safety first. <laughs> okay. So where yes. are you sending Correct. samples? You showing Great all culture. this good stuff. And then we can't touch it. I feel like we on OnlyFans or something. Look. <laughs> oh my God. Were y'all drinking on the call before I got I here? know, right? We, we need all the good juice. We need all the good juice. Yeah. All the good juice. <laughs> when am I getting a sample? This is like, you know, too good to be true here. I think what you could do, in all seriousness, Marcel, if you're willing. We could do one could, of those things like we did where you, we... Tasted them all together on one of these calls. I was going to say you could. You that would could be ship, dope. Yeah, uh, you yeah. could ship something, yeah. some, some bottles to me, and I can batch them out and, and send them to. <laughs> that was fun yeah. that time we did that. Yeah, we, we need to do that, that again. Uh, yeah. After the in contact, uh, look, uh, this uh, label there. It's uh, it's called um, Shark Tank. The Swiss version of Shark Tank. I attended. Oh. I was, uh, okay. Cool. Okay. So, the last season there and I, I presented that I want to develop because I was not finished. I want to develop my uh, this is exists as a dry chin, London dry chin or a dry chin. Um, and I want to develop this with alcohol free. And I validated my company at that time. It was one and a half years old, the company, with one million dollars already. Wow. I just uh, validation on a spirit brand in all Europe Shark Tank post. Because they didn't brought me anything in the network. So they, they just brought, would bring money. And money I have. I need network. So I didn't oh. took after the show. And 
I'm in a show in Germany. They uh, a committee show where I developed the eggnog liquor for the show in a show. And, and at the show publishing date, the eggnog liquor will be available all over Germany. <laughs> so that's cool. First time a drink is created in a show that's the next day available in our shops. So are you telling me I still got to fly, get on a flight to go? This is a very expensive alcohol, <laughs> non-alcohol drink. I got to get on a flight to come over there just to taste it. Look. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what he's saying. We're all going to be with you. Like, yeah. <laughs> Family of two invited me to Dubai. I was flying there. In the morning, I was oh. landing. And then I was with them. So it's, um, I was invited by the, uh, the, the government of South Africa because they have big problems with alcohol. They banned alcohol during COVID there. So, um, South Africa have more problems than just yeah. alcohol, honey. Okay. Is everything you do, <laughs> is everything you do non-alcoholic? No, no. Uh, you know, non-alcoholic was just by luck, you know. I'm so surprised. I, uh, a few days ago, I tested, I made a pina colada chin. So I made a chin with coconut and pineapple. Nobody, I couldn't find it online. No other brand do it. So I, I created it. It was so tasty. And I created it alcohol-free. And yesterday I drank it with a friend and I said, it tastes like alcohol. It's so fantastic. I'm surprised by myself every time I use it. I drink it, you know, still. Uh, it's, um, I didn't believe get to this point. You know, I never started to get to this point. A customer asked me uh, with my knowledge, please create one. And one customer paid me to develop mm. it mm. and deliver. And it didn't work. It didn't work for weeks. It didn't work. And then I, I told the others, I left it on a Friday evening and I left the, the samples. And the next Saturday in the, in the noon, I went there to want to throw it away and clean it up. And I uh, started to test them and suddenly they tasted like alcohol. So you have to give it a rest between 12 to 24 hours till it tastes like alcohol. The first course I can guarantee you, it tastes like shitty nothing. <laughs> okay. Is that Pixie? That's on there. Who else is here? They, before uh, I we think Pixies has her AI uh, recording going, so she can catch up on this later. Oh, what was the video that I have to see? The recording of this session. Oh, okay. Well, Got you, it. But you just we just relived a bunch of it. It was it was for what you <laughs> just, what yeah. just changed. Yeah. If you come to Switzerland, Zurich is the airport. It's not far, uh, but otherwise, you know. Uh, at the moment, I'm producing the first uh, ton of this. Uh, uh, so it's, I think, 2,000 pounds, something I produce of Alcosend 1 and 2. So one is for distilled gin, one is for aromatized gin. And I try to get the production running. Uh, the other hand, I would need network, you know. I don't know. How, I want to be worldwide available in two in, in the next two years. That everyone so, can use. I, I don't think you heard my initial question, but so is... All these things that you're doing are they on 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 non-alcoholic or did you start making with alcohol and then these people asked you to create non-alcoholic? I started during COVID, you know, and in COVID I distilled sure. 16 a day, and I distilled more than two thousand times during COVID. And uh, at that time, I only could learn with alcohol because in Europe you have to have fifteen percent alcohol of uh, down to fifteen percent. You don't need to look to conservation, and I had sure. no no conservation. So after COVID, I was learning how to pasteurize and how to use the conservation. And I, I always a fan of low chemics. So I looked into natural conservation and all of this and step by step, you know, it came. And also Alcosent has the whole, I don't know, preservatives or conservation. I don't know the right word in English for your end product. So if you make an alcohol-free whiskey, alcohol-free chin, alcohol-free um, liquor, you don't have okay. to look how to uh, look for conservation in it's in my product and it's a natural it's salts type of salts i use they only react with your stomach to water yeah. and sea so yeah. all the in the in alcohol can't be taken into your body so really perfect made for for the human body like well michael let us know when you get the sample <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll follow up on that. We'll follow up on that. I, I'm, you know, I'm Marcel. This has been uh, the beginning, I think, of a conversation that uh, we, we want to have yeah. more of because I also think that um, you've you've really 
change the game, which I think ultimately, you know, um, if you're when you're coming to the United States, for example, I have to believe at some point the FDA is going to need to, you know, approve, you know, set a list all the ingredients in and FDA. Way. List all uh, the ingredients and to FDA rules. I'm an engineer, you know, I'm not a mixer. I'm an engineer. So I looked at my product compl is compliant with all, all the world. The hardest is not US. The hardest was the noble food rule of Europe. So everything uh -huh. in Europe before 1997 is noble food and you need to invest 100,000 and uh, three years to get a certification that you are allowed to use that in food. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's really hard uh, for Europe. So I, I had to find a way already I want that AcroCent is can be used worldwide right away. So you know, uh, we will send uh, we will the ideas that we produce it in the US in future. I find a partner. I already have. I'm also a shareholder of an engineering company, and we already mm -hmm. engineering for a factory. What type of engineer are you? Because I'm a civil structural retired engineer. I went to oh, engineering yeah. school. So yeah, you can being an engineer ain't no damn big deal when you got two of them <laughs> in the room. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can find the moment of inertia the same way as you can. <laughs> you can watch Niederberger engineering. Niederberger. What type of discipline are you? Uh, we uh, look it up. We do uh, uh, machine technology, machine, yeah. Mechanical? Mechanical, yes. Okay, my husband's a mechanical engineer too. Licensed PE. Look it up. Uh, we all engineers here. When we did, when we make it liquor, we all engineers. <laughs> 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 oh, all right. Well, um, Marcel, I'm going to follow up with you. Um, yes, please. With an email. How did Marcel so can... find our group? I'm just curious. Wait, uh, that's Michael a good I believe Michael Clancy. Okay. Oh, uh, that it's. Oh, okay. Where is Michael? <laughs> yeah, he, he said he, he was, was going to be away. Yeah, yeah he's he tired immediately. Away. <laughs> yeah. Well, Marcel, thank you. Um, we appreciate you've given us a lot to think about. Yeah. I thank everyone here. Um, Attila, uh, did you you were? Yeah. Uh, do you want to add anything to this convo? No, I'm I'm more intrigued by what he's doing and 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 what kind of what kind of authority he's going to fall under. Is it going to be the TTB or is it going to be the yeah. FDA? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. It's going to take exactly. a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thank you. Uh, our next. Hey, sorry, I was late, guys. I apologize. August What's our next meeting? No Duty call. August I'm second. Just, first. I'm Friday. thankful to be on the meeting, everyone, and thank you guys. Like this was very informative, and thank you, Vanessa, again for putting me on this call, and I'm just very appreciative. Thank you. All right. And Trent, keep us posted. You said you're a couple of weeks away. So, you know, we need an update. Okay. <laughs> and Ken, we're coming to see you. Ken, I'll take All care right. of you guys. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank All you. All right. Have a good one. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.